This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. That's the plan. We talk about wrestling. I mean, yeah. We're just, somehow, this is the least organized yet longest podcast we do. Yeah. Yet still most watched, other than scary. Yeah, sort. That's because people come for the mayhem. They do. They do. If they, if was, it's our brand. If this was the wrestling strictly structured show, we would not be in our twelfth year. That's right. That's right, Mad Mike. This is the these <laughs> strictly, um, this is a, whatever you said. It's a wrestling mayhem show, and uh, we've been doing this for uh, over six hundred and something something Tuesdays. That we've been celebrating professionalized wrestling here on the Wrestling Ma'am Show from the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we do have with us, that was the voice you heard at the beginning. We're doing things a little different because we don't have a producer. It's without a net. Without a net, Mad Mike is with us. No net. Sorg, there is no one that is going to be able to cut me off. Ever. Cut you off? I mean, no. I mean, it's, it's actually going to happen probably more because you're on a Skype line and there's another person on the Skype line, and that's where that usually happens, or a hangout line. Damn the man. Damn the man. No, it's not damn the man because this week we got a woman with us. Uh, we have Lola <laughs> Brad Perry with us. Damn the man. <laughs> <laughs> also a podcaster. Wow. Yeah, and I can never remember yes. podcast names. What, what podcast do you do out there? TWM News UK. We talk about Raw, SmackDown Live, all that good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Go check it out. Listen to a little bit of you over there. And I'm just, you know, if I was on a podcast, I love Brits talking about wrestling on podcasts. I don't know what it is. One, it makes it sound yeah. smarter, right? And also, okay. I don't think I would be able to do it without also like slipping into a bad accent along with them. <laughs> so, so prosper not doing that. Um, I've caught myself a couple times. I've been like this close. <laughs> like, I was going to say, w- would you prefer Sorg and I to talk in our bad English accents? Oh, we could do that for you. If it make, yeah, if you feel more comfortable that way. Oh, I mean, give it a shot. All right. So let's, like, talk about, let's talk about NXT UK. I love me some Rhea Ripley. All right. Right, Rhea right, Ripley right. Is, um, I know it hasn't been revealed yet, but spoiler alert, she is the NXT UK Women's Champion, and I hear she's going to have a match at Evolution, and it's going to be smashing. I think it, I agree. I agree. It's going to be, she's going to win the belt, and it's going to be a hotty pip pip and cheerio. Why do you sound Spanish instead of <laughs> <laughs> We didn't say they were good accents or accurate, okay? I, I think mine was okay. I think mine Yours was more okay. accurate. Yeah. It's, if I close my eyes, I see Wade Barrett. Yes! Whoa. Oh. Oh, well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news! Yes, it's, it's just, just Mad now. Mike. It's just, yeah. <laughs> That's the bad news. Anyways, I said this is the, me. That sets the tone for this episode somehow. Oh, God help oh, us. Alex, if we're doing timey-wimey mayhem, I'll have my Lego TARDIS. With there me. you go. There you go. Um, and you're getting a lot more Legos because that's what he does on Monday nights to cope. Uh, but anyways, thank uh-huh. you everybody in the chat room joining us. Of course, our friends out there, Tina, Wheels, Alex, Dave, uh, and more hanging out with us on Facebook Live as we do every uh, Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can also drop us a line at that email address. Good times. <laughs> yes. Broke him. Broke him. Oh, good times at WrestlingMamShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 or WrestlingMamShow.com where you can find links and subscribe to us in the podcast and video forums or look us up on your favorite platform. And if we're missing on your favorite platform, when how the hell are you listening to us? And um, also, uh, we'll, we'll get over there uh, once you uh, uh, hit us up on either of those ways. Hit us at a at Mayhem Show or on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. A lot of great discussion happening over on the group. Um we're sharing a lot of fun stuff about some some weird indie wrestling that friends of ours like DJZ 
are doing uh, that involve no rings. It's kind of Fight Club style, and I think it's in Florida because uh, I, I know one of our friends on there was. Uh, <laughs> Alex says you should email Jolly Good Times at Wrestling Man. You can also, you you know what? You can't email us at Jolly Good Times <laughs> at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Um, you can also uh, email us at Fish and Chips at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. And Timey Wimey. You can also email us at, at Pip Pip Cheerio. Pip Pip Cheerio. <laughs> I, I I how many am I going to get? Going to say Pip Pip Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> All of these should uh, work, man. I believe. Uh, fan emails between, it's all cat emails. It's all cat yes. emails. Mm -hmm. I don't if you want to email, if you want to email us about corgis, uh, just email us <laughs> at, at God Save the Queen at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Welcome to the Westminster <laughs> Mayhem Show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. Okay, oh. I'm crying. I'm crying. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. All right. No, I already said all this stuff. What? Is, oh, that's the Twitter thing for producer. Also, thank you to our friends carrying this. We're sorry. The 405media.com every every night. This is going to go out every night for seven nights over at the 405media.com at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific time, seven can, days a week. Sword, sword, can we possibly have that go along with the Big Ben? Bong, bong, bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me post that at this show. Um, anyways, <laughs> if you can also support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling may mayhem show, because obviously you're getting some value from this. Uh, our friends over there at the fan of the show, $1 level, Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby, if... <laughs> The delay is amazing. Uh, Ed Burke, Bobby of Daytown, uh, Tina Keys, and Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, and the Pocky Club $5 level. I can't even remember what we did on gold at this point. Um, I know some of the dan the singing didn't happen. Uh, but <laughs> Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remney, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, and our friend at the Pizza <laughs> Club, $10 level, Billy F. and Johnson. You guys are really helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And this is um, the point where I ignore the notes because that's last week's Dave, notes. Hold on, hold on. Yes? Dave said mayhem show is my ASMR. <laughs> we're honored sir i guess i guess as long as you didn't find us over on pornhub.com uh but anyways <laughs> and we've linked it tonight's shows together if you want to if you want to hear us talk about me discovering asmr as a concept um go listen to awesome cast i believe it's 418 just went out on the podcatchers and or it'll be everywhere by by wednesday of course and if you want to hear Sorg discover ASMR for pleasure, give it a week. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe I, a month. I don't. I. Okay. Um. Um. <laughs> um. The M stands for mayhem. <laughs> totally off the rails. All Bringing right. it around. I hear there is a pay per view this weekend, I, and it it and it involves all the ladies. It's called WWE Evolution. We're gonna have a watch party here, of course, um, at, uh, at at Mayhem Central here at Sorgatron Media Studios. Please join us here for that, and we'll have some other stuff happening around that. I'll talk about a little bit later in the show. But in the meantime, it is it is the lady show. It is the first ever all women's pay per view on for the WWE. Um and uh and, and and Mike, we've been talking about kind of the presentation of this. Uh, matches are being released more uh, other than even what they said on Raw, you know, with their involvements with uh, NXT and everything like that. Um, I, I'm gonna ask Lola because uh, we got our opinions a lot the last few weeks. Uh, Lola, how are you feeling going into <laughs> this this first ever women's pay per view? I've been super super vocal about this on Twitter, and I've gotten a lot of shit for it. Um, the thing is. I feel, and I think I said this the last time when I was on with Honey Badger, it feels like uh, we're sorry for a crown jewel the first time around pay-per-view. It is a massive thing for the women to have this showcase that they are so deserving of, NXT, SmackDown, Raw. But, and there's so much that's come from the women's evolution. We've gotten, you know, Barbie dolls of the women in WWE, which is fantastic, something I wish I would have had growing up. Um, but the presentation overall, I think, is very, very lazy. Um, and I will give you one example. If you're going to have a women's positivity pay-per-view, you don't bring back kind of the 
slut shaming attitude era diva era thing you take the divas era and what they were given to use and turn that into something positive of an evolution to what we are now in the women's division and one thing that really bothers me ronda rousey's promo from last week is every twitter bros argument to nikki bella and it's lazy and whether you like nikki bella and Brie bella or not whether how you feel about the bellas they are a part of the women's revolution total Total Bellas, Total Divas have brought in a new kind of viewership to the women's division in WWE. You do have to give them credit where it's due. And the writing has been lazy. And I get you can't always have all these women have solo matches, but showcase the you know, women's tag division that you've been building up that you completely forgot about. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like they should do so much better. And they're throwing it together because they're going to Crown Jewel the week right after. So, so probably the, 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 a talent for, for, for booking is probably uh, concentrated on that, of course. Uh, so, so, and just just to try to analyze that one point there, um, is, because I don't watch it much anymore, but, you know, is the kind of conversation that, that Rhonda had with with the Bellas, is that in line with the kind of things that are still happening on Total Divas and, and shows like that? Um, the thing with Total Divas this season is uh, Nikki's post breakup with John Cena. Right. Uh, last season they got through everything, and I like if you're going to use the line of "you only are where you are because of men" mm-hmm. for all women's positivity pay per view, you need to change something backstage with the writers. Right. It just seems ridiculous. Well, I, I, like I, I had a like, if you wanted to do that promo. I think there's a there's a way of doing it creatively where you can do the exact same promo, but Rhonda has to be the heel. Mm-hmm. Like if Ronda because the reason it worked last time was because it was AJ doing it. AJ was the heel and she was also being a bit of a hypocrite because she was with CM Punk at the time. So like that's the reason it worked because when you're a heel, you can say things that are off color and um, a little bit over the line. When you're a face, you really shouldn't do those things unless you're a transcendent face like The Rock who just can say whatever he wants mm-hmm. and no one really says anything one way or the other. Yeah. Ronda ain't there yet. No, no. It, 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 it sounds like she wrote that segment herself, so... I don't yikes. know. Yeah. Oh, yikes. <laughs> well, yeah. I say there's there's no there's no women in the writers room. I don't think. Period. I don't believe so. Because I, I mean, um, I don't think there is because a former writer for WWE made a huge post about it, and I had responded and I said, you know, he he had been fired or he had chosen to leave. Don't exactly quote me on this, but he said, you know, things do need to change, but if you're not willing to step up to the plate and say, Hey, this is how we should be writing women and not through this kind of sexist rose colored glass, Mm -hmm. then you start having that change in positivity in the women's division. You can still have that competition. You can still have, I'm jealous of you, but you can do it in a healthy way. Right. Yeah. Or, or, or you could just have stories that don't center around jealousy because Mm -hmm. it's like jealousy is the default setting to any women's feud. Look at Alexa Bliss, look at Carmella, look, you can even go all the way back to Lay Cool, to like any, like whenever they don't want to think of something, it's just let's default to, oh, well, you're just jealous of me. Yeah, yeah. Or you're like, old, that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, like you'd never hear um, <laughs> like Dolph Ziggler <laughs> say, to Seth, say to Seth Rollins, oh, you're just jealous of me. Like, no, that doesn't really. Can we just work. Run, can we just run that uh, that that on for size? You know, try that on for size for a while. Can that like just be the the the, you know, like like when we have our you know fiftieth batch of the year on Monday Night Raw? Like, let's change it up, and that and, and that's what well, we're doing. Uh, I I maintain that if if we do Evolution again next year, mm-hmm. um, in like right before the main event, there should be a WWE Championship tuxedo match. That goes three minutes. Canadian tuxedo, or is there like a weird stipulation, like a 
I, I think it depends on who the champion is. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever kind of garb they prefer. But I feel like, they're, <laughs> like, I think it would be funny. Like, I really like, want Sami like, Zayn. See how it feels. Like I this want is, this Sammy is how Zane. women were treated back in the Azure. Right. Like, Sami <laughs> Zayn and Kevin Owens in a Canadian tuxedo match. They, well, that's that's amazing on a couple mm-hmm. levels. Mm-hmm. So, and thank you, Team Storm, yeah. for educating me on the snazziness of a Canadian tuxedo with their Sorg, celebration Sorg. last month. Stop trying to make your shirt relevant to the. Topic I'm sorry. Of I'm wrestling. representing. I was. I was shamed. That's one thing that happened. Go. I was shamed for not having a women's shirt. On or in my possession, the closest yep. thing I have is Jackson Argos. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Are right. you saying Jackson Argos is the closest thing to a woman's That's shirt you have? <laughs> He's gonna I mean, be really mad at you. Uh, why coming T-shirt? That's why. I was say I, I was looking through my shirts. I I found the Kern Angle one. I found the Delirious one, and I found the Jackson Argos one. I was like, no, this one is appropriate for today. Okay. That's all, all right. I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand this. Smack, uh, SmackDown is doing making the same mistake Raw did. But yeah, what is what is that? What's going on in SmackDown right we're now? Not, we're not main eventing with the women. Oh. It is a go-home show. And, and again, I mean, that's a really direct thing to say, you know, are we, how are we representing this, you know? Uh, uh, Lola, so Mike was making the, the contention last night on the Raw wrap-up. And by the way, thank you everybody who's been coming out to the Raw wrap-up on Monday nights. Um, we've been having some really killer chat rooms going on during that. Um, making the contention that we had this Evolution special on USA Network after Raw. And that was kind of like an apology letter for not mm-hmm. doing much to push evolution as a show with everything going on in other places uh what what are your thoughts on that Uh, excuse me if i keep muting my microphone it's because i'm coughing um but but the thing is it's they've had what three months to build up to evolution now Mm -hmm. close to that and they crown jewel crown jewel saudi arabia blood money crown jewel crown jewel um, Super Showdown, and they've made this, and no offense, they made it this sausage fest, and at the last minute, they're cramming everything into evolution without really cause, and it feels rushed, and it mm-hmm. shouldn't be, because they've had three months to do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, and it doesn't even, like, I understand they want to get as many people, as many women on the roster as possible on the card. I get that. I completely get that. There's a better way of doing it. There's a better way of doing it. Like, Instead of just having a huge battle royal for a title match that if you're on Raw, you ain't going to win. If you're on SmackDown, you ain't going to win. Now, what would be kind of cool maybe is if someone won and decided to challenge for the NXT title or the NXT UK women's title. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. I don't think that would happen because, again, that's using creativity and writing. (laughs) But, um, like, we could have done women's tag titles. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There are so many established women's tag teams on both brands and legend teams. Like, mm-hmm. like we could have had the Iconics mm-hmm. versus Lay Cool, Sonya and Mandy, Lay Cool, the Bellas, the Bellas. Mm-hmm. We could have had the Bellas, Naomi and Asuka. Even Naomi and Asuka, they're a makeshift team, but they've been teaming for a couple of months now. I still like, feel like they're going to drop this at the last minute on the show. There's sorry, there's no place to do it. There's no this is this is the go home show. There's nothing yeah. else live. No, I'm saying I'm saying I think they're gonna announce it on the pre show. Mm. And do it. No. No, because they'd have to promote it. Mm. With with all the stuff they did last night on Raw, if they were gonna do it last minute, last night was the night to do it. My counter to that is are two things. Um and I feel like this is going to be treated in that vein for better or for worse. Um, because this is kind of like the new experimental things like like we're getting with a lot of these other properties. Hell, Wednesday night's programming on, on WWE Network. Let's just say that. Um, we got at WrestleMania at the last minute the presentation and unveiling that it was going to be converted to a women's championship instead of um, the Divas, I think, at the but, time. But the contention of that is there were it was there was already a match right right that championship uh, and it was unveiled at the last minute that the first probably only uh cruiserweight classic 
uh, was not just for the tournament, but also the first cruiserweight champion at the last. But game. again, but again, that was already for something, right? That was a match right. that was already booked. We don't have like unless they say that Trish and and Trish and Lita versus Alexa and Mickey is for the new WWE mm. Women's Tag Team Championships, which would be bullshit. Or they could drop that on that six lady match uh, for some reason um, with uh, Riot Squad. Well, like the thing is with them constantly doing like the six women tags, I, I feel like you in that short amount of time that the women are given, they can showcase what they're capable of, but they need to get back to the point where they can individually have the women be showcased mm -hmm. and still be established that, oh, you know, Need be I can work with my best friends Natalia and Bailey, but I can still kick ass on my own. And I think we need to get back to that point again because we've lost that in the mix of everything. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other matches happening in Evolution uh, here uh, uh, as well. But first, I want to give a shout out and support uh, a little bit of indie wrestling over at IndieWrestling.us. Hey, a lot of those girls that pop up there, um, we've seen around the indies. Um, um, Ruby Riot, uh, I don't think we have a lot on IndieWrestling.us, but she's out there. Um, Sarah Logan as a Crazy Mary, uh, things like that. And there's a lot of up-and-coming ladies over there. You can go check out IndieWrestling.us, including a very new release. Are you ready for it, Mike? Just released last night, and this is more probably for the wrestlers out there and aspiring wrestlers. Uh, we just put a release of a seminar, uh, Learning Lucha with DJ Z. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yes, he's so happy that I have this in the ads right now. Uh, no, we he had a pretty cool session that uh, I, I put... I, uh, Got it uh, re-edited so you can kind of learn a little bit of the techniques and apply it to whatever you're doing. Plus, there's a special 30-minute Q&A uh, exclusive to the release. It's over on our VOD over on IndieWrestling.us. It's Learning Lucha with DJZ. <laughs> I love the tone shift. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, check out that and so much more, including IWC's Un Unbreakable. And there's a clip out there of uh, Gary Michael Capetta, our good friend, former announcer of uh, uh, from WCW, announcing the uh, tag team championship match with Team Storm, uh, taking on the Lethal Enforcers. And uh, and uh, we got pre-orders up. I'm about halfway through editing uh, IWA's Bloody Harvest. I include friend of the show um, Shane Taylor, who will be featured on Indie Wrestling uh, Indie Mayhem show uh, that will be releasing this Thursday. So please go check it out. I know Lola, you had some uh, um, close confrontations with with Shane as well before the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I will say the sheer intensity that Daniel Leeds and Shane Taylor brought in that match. And even when I spoke with them pre-show on Facebook live, you could literally, you felt, I felt like they were staring right through me to kill each other. Mm -hmm. it, and it, You just have these two large individuals and then <laughs> her in the middle <laughs> questioning everything. <laughs> my eyes. Yes, and they yes. stood up. She's like, maybe, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> but no, go check that out. And of course, he made an appearance on the RWA wrap up um, as well. Um, a, a lot of stuff going on there. A lot of fun stuff kept going on with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. And a lot more happening. Lodi's coming back, you guys. The sign guy from the flock. Just to nail it down. Wait, go, go look. Sorg, at we know who Lodi is. I just want to make sure. I do have to say, he's looking forward to pummeling ryan edmonds on november 17th and i'm looking forward to every second of it after what he put chris taylor through i will be cheering Lodi on and losing my voice so check that out of course all that will be available on indywrestling.us and also subscribe to the indie wrestling network www.indywrestling.network and a link over there indywrestling.us um there's a lot happening there um we are we are trying to get doe and Duke together to give some more hardcore memories uh, that is in the, in the works. We'll have a more shows there. Also, I just was giving a laundry list of shows we should make for the network by Marcus Mann. 
you never know what might actually happen. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, And we are in discussions. There are some interest for some new promotions coming out on the network. And we'll be fleshing out with some new Rise Wrestling, Premier Wrestling, and old uh, PWO Prime Wrestling here in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. Get your free trial over there at the Indie Wrestling Network. Yes, Alex, Lodi is coming back. I, <laughs> is Alex a big Lodi fan? Um, but anyway, sort of who is the big Lodi fan? I, I know, right? I know. Uh, but no, looking forward to that. Uh, so, uh, so there's more, there's more to evolution. Of course we got the, cha- well, we got the one championship match that we've talked about a little bit here, but you gotta say, you know, probably, probably, man, I wish this was on the quote a show. Um, Becky and Charlotte is some of the best stuff going right now. Yeah, it's it's an actual feud that's not based on jealousy, which is no. great. Well, isn't it's it a not. little no. bit like more like competitive jealousy, isn't it? I think it's I think it's due to the fact that Becky feel like Charlotte's been holding her back. Mm-hmm. Like to a to a degree. I mean, you have to kind of think of how many times Becky's been betrayed over the years and now this time she had the one up on charlotte to do it and gain the championship again so i mean it is becky could tell you to eat dirt and you would cheer her on at this point and they're so, trying so hard to make charlotte the face and all of this and i will say her promo earlier tonight kind of made me feel for her a little bit but becky lynch this is her best run by oh, far yeah. absolutely oh yeah Becky's killing it. Like the the segment with Edge last week. Oh, 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 oh. when she said, "Don't hurt your neck again," getting out of my ring, I was in tears. I was like, "Oh, Becky, oh, Becky, where have you been? Where is this Becky?" You been? know, I, I'm, I'm always worried. I was like, "Oh, is Becky going to break through with this? Is, is this character going to take right?" And then, and then a line like that drops, you know, and Edge is doing the best, like, don't do it my way uh, situation. So, I mean, it's just, it was, it was just fantastic. Um, it, that, that, that puts every confidence in, in what's going on there. Um, awesome. So, so that, that is now going to be a last woman standing. Makes sense considering what they've been doing here the last couple of months. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so, and, and by all rights, you know, other than the star power that is Ronda Rousey and and they're going to be, I think, crutching on it a little bit for this show, um, that, that really should be like the main event, uh, is, is this last woman standing match. It should be, but it's probably not going to be. Um, yeah. Also, I just, go ahead. Um, no, I feel like this would instead of the Bella. I mean, it makes sense with the Bella twins kind of inviting her in when we're Ronda first got out there. But this would be so much better if it was Natalia versus Rousey. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I think everyone in the world would would agree with you. That's going to be our like, like middle pay per view where it doesn't matter quite as much kind of thing. I think I, when that turns. I don't know if we're ever going to get that. Yeah. Like we may get that on a Raw. We su- I don't know if that's ever going to be a pay per view. We were supposing, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, you know, we got filling somewhere since you know Ronda is actually showing up to wrestle most weeks at this point. Um, we were talking about a little bit last night the fact that Alexa Bliss and Mickey James uh, became a tag match against Trish and Lita, um, and we're pretty sure it's injury, you know, kind of pointed on this. Well, supposedly Alexa got a concussion over the weekend. Over the like, weekend, first she had an arm injury. But then she apparently healed up from that and then got a concussion over the weekend. I would not be sad if Alicia Fox takes her place. <laughs> right? I I wouldn't be either, but at the same time, I think if that's the case, then I'd feel bad for Alexa. Mm-hmm. I'd feel bad for Alexa because, you know, like she may not be the best representation for women's wrestling right now, but she has been a cornerstone over the past year or so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Especially in the elimination, elimination chamber. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, that's right. I forgot that they did one of those. Yeah. All right. Uh, it, now, that will be good. I mean, it, it, and that's your – I did love the that's how we did in the Attitude Era uh, segment this week uh, with Trish and Lita. Uh, and it, 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 they're – 
great representatives of that era. I know we, we kind of complain about like all the divas kind of being um, represented in here for like that part of it. But uh, I, I, I think they're great for uh, getting that. Um, Kyrie Sane and Shayna Baszler, again, not caught up on XT, but very excited. Uh, yeah, it's going to be the fireworks factory. Absolutely. I know a um, f- uh, uh, friend of the show, Britt Baker, got involved with Shayna here in recent weeks uh, on NXT. Uh, mm-hmm. So good to see her coming up on TV on WWE. Um, we'll see her in a couple of weeks here in the area for Winner Takes All for IWC, I believe the second weekend of uh, November. Um, so good to see her back after that. Uh, so, I mean, they always deliver on this. Kyrie Sane's amazing. Shayna's amazing. Um, and we were supposing last night on the wrap of, uh, hey, Shayna and Ronda are on the same show, you guys. Do you think I, that, Lola, do you think anything's going to happen with that? I suspect that they're going to do something since they brought up, I can't think of the one girl's name, but I know they brought up Marina Schaefer, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm um, super, super excited about. Yeah, Marina and uh, Justin Duke have both been working yeah. on NXT house shows. So they, ha- they have been working, and they are a thing. I don't know if they're ready for um, NXT TV yet. I will say, though, over Rousey, the best transition of MMA into wrestling that I've seen, and I'm sure there's another case I can't think of it off the top of my head, but like Shanna Baszler transitioning into NXT and being the top heel on that brand – has really showcased what you can do if you give it time. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, do you want to hear a crazy prediction? Okay. I'm, uh, I'm open for I, this. I, I don't think this is going to happen. I Not don't even happen. know if I want it to happen, <laughs> to be fair. Um, what if Shayna... Basler costs Ronda the title. Please, 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 please. I want it. I want it. Universe, give I'm, it to me. I'm, ready. I'm just saying. Dude. Because I, I don't like I don't think anyone wants to see Ronda be legitimately undefeated until next year's WrestleMania. I don't think anyone really wants that because we did that with Brock. No one liked it. Um, Asuka only worked because she was in very small doses on NXT. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the, and I don't even know if I want Nikki as the raw women's champion. I don't even think I want that. But I think if we have Nikki as the raw women's champion for a couple months, we have Shayna and Ronda battle each other for a little bit. Ronda can get the belt back at, say, Royal Rumble, the same event where, let's say, a shirt, a certain second generation, seven time women's champion, woo, wins the Royal Rumble. And thus we set up your WrestleMania view. Ooh. I like this. I like this planning. I like these, this planning. Because then we can have, like, the Raw Women's Champion actually, like, kind of wrestle periodically more where it doesn't have to be a super special event Mm -hmm. on Raw every week. Mm -hmm. Because, like, because right now, like Alex is saying in the chat room, excuse me, I hope that if they do Four Horsewomen versus Four Horsewomen, we're not ready for that. Like, no. no one's ready for that on any level right now. No, Charlotte, you, no. Charlotte and Becky are feuding. Yeah. The other two horsewomen are still greenish because they're not even on NXT TV yet. And Sasha and Bailey have unfortunately been an afterthought in the Raw Women's Division. So, no one's really set up for that. But I think this could be a cool way because then Ronda loses. But it's not a clean loss. It's definitely not a fair loss. And and Nick and they could even say that she that she heard what Nikki Bella had to say, and Nikki was right. Ronda didn't deserve that Raw, Raw Women's Championship. Meanwhile, Shayna has been busting her ass in NXT. She's been the NXT champion. She's been kicking ass all over the place. But however, my question is with Raw call-ups being 50-50 from NXT, 
do you think Shayna they would spend the time on Shayna to make her a top heel on Raw eventually? I I think because Raw did okay with Oscar. Mm-hmm. Raw did okay with Oscar. It's as soon as Oscar lost, they had no idea what to do with her. Mm-hmm. But if you bring up Shayna like you did Oscar, and plus Shayna's going to have a lot more. It's going to be easier with Shayna, and this sounds terrible, but Shayna can cut a promo. Shayna can cut a promo. Like the thing with Oscar, though, she could cut a promo in Japanese and sound intense. And I think the moment she lost, all the mystique was gone. Mm -hmm. Um, Because they they had her stop cutting promos in Japanese, like they did on NXT, and they Mm -hmm. just kind of dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah. Like when they lost, they had no plan. For what next for Oscar? And it's hard it for Oscar to be the um, you know ESPN cover girl, you know. Um, it, it's you know Charlotte, you know Charlotte is is the Charlotte, superstar. Charlotte is Roman Reigns. She is. She really is. She's got she's, the pedigree. She's, the she's yeah. The yeah. So um, I mean, there was even an article I saw floating around. It was probably Bleacher Report or something of the sort that was like why Charlotte Flair is is the face of women's division right now, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of those factors in there. So I, I love Brandon calling and, out Chelsea Green versus Charlotte Flair. I'd love to see it. Yeah, sure. Sign me up. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather see Chelsea Green beat up Zack Ryder, but that's just me. Hey, hey. Um, but, Stork, you have not seen everything. We don't talk about that anymore. No, we, no, we told, no, I'm saying in a match. I'm saying oh, I saw Chelsea's oh, match of Pentagon, and I want to see her, oh, I want to see her mess up some male wrestlers. <laughs> Totally different thought process. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ray, that's the inappropriate one for once. That's the thought process that got you in trouble at the end of the the R Bay wrap up. <laughs> I I panicked. Yes, you're gonna have to go watch that to see what happened there. Um, that's her sound bite of her career right there. Uh, we also have an announced team. Of course, we knew last night Beth Phoenix and Renee Young, but also Paige is going to be added to that as well to be a three woman booth. Um, Whoa, so really? Adding where, a little bit of that? accent to it as well, aren't we, Mad Mike? Wait, wait, Sorg, where are you reading that? Uh, on the page for Evolution on WWE.com. So it's Paige, what? Renee, and Beth? Yep. That's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. That is tremendous. Yes. I will say the whole situation with Paige and how she got herself back together and became general manager. This has been so, so good for her, not even to showcase what she can do at, when she's not able to wrestle, but what she can do in the future. She's running her own clothing brand, makeup brand, being general manager and kicking ass. Mm-hmm. No, and good for Paige. Good for mm-hmm. Paige. She fucking deserves it. Um, also, of course, we mentioned the six women tag with uh, Sasha Bailey. Natalia against the Riot Squad. That's going to be good. I mean, the, uh, uh, they, they, you know, we, we were talking about this last night about, you know, that's one of those matches where there's enough girls in there that uh, they're going to step up. And, and I think anybody that's worth their weight, um, you know, these girls have been killing on NXT and maybe not had the same platform by now on, on, on the big brands, um, and especially the girls that are from NXT. Um, they're going to, to, to show why they have a show. I if think. that ma- if that match is given enough time, that mm-hmm. six woman tag, that could steal the show. Absolutely, absolutely. I, if that if that match is given fifteen minutes, that match could steal the show. That could be on. I'm really kind of putting this out there, but that could be on the level of when we watch a pay per view and like the Usos and New Day just steal the hell out of the show. That's that's literally about what I was going to say, Sorg. Uh, yeah. uh, there you go, brain brain waves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and, of course, the Battle Royal is going to have a bunch of people. <laughs> um, sorry. Who would we, like, if we could pick anyone from from the women's roster uh, to win that Battle Royal? Including uh, NXT? Yes, including NXT, including NXT. UK. Anybody from the roster or anybody that they have lined up here for this Battle Royal? Anyone from the roster, because I'm sure there's going to be surprises. Okay. Also remember, this is a battle royal, not a royal rumble. So yeah, no, I know, but there's gonna be surprises. I mean, if you look, if you look at the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal, like Bianca Belair was in there, Zia Lee was in there, right. not Zia Lee, um, Kavita Devi was in there. Like there were a f- there were a few NXT call ups you know in what? there. You know what? 
give me. Well, I was gonna say one, but I'll say another one. Uh, give me Molly Holly, comeback run. Whoa, oh, I like that. I was originally gonna say Alundra plays, but she can go drive monster trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say one thing that really pees me in NXT. Candice LeRae should be a top baby face right now on oh, NXT. Oh, jeez, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, if they would have built her up to be a top baby face easily, I would have her take the the Rumble, uh, the Battle Royal, the Evolution. But the thing is, they keep booking her as just Johnny's wife, and that's the problem because she, in her interview, she said about her beating up Kevin Owens at like PWG, mm-hmm. and now she's being utilized as the doting wife, and that's fine. But also, be, have her be the badass Candice LeRae that we know her as. Mm-hmm. I. I think they may be building towards something by identifying her as Johnny's wife, though. Mm-hmm. Because they're also identifying Nikki with Alistair Black. Oh, yeah. So I think we could... Uh, see mm-hmm. I get your... I, get your I, get, I think we could see some kind of, like, mixed tag team thing going on. Could be fun. Only if it's truly intergender. I oh. <laughs> If you're going to start that anywhere, it's going to be on NXT. Yep. I it's mean, true. if anybody, if they're going to experiment, it's the experimental brand, right? It's where they try mm-hmm. things like that. They have a smaller scale. They don't have uh, the same people to get things by them to get approved. And there's, someone, there's someone who doesn't watch the product. <laughs> <laughs> or has a different idea on what it should be. But um, yes, or doesn't know what decade it is. Um, um, if, if, if I had to pick anyone for that battle royal, Sarah Del Rey. Oh, wow, friend of the show. Remember when we yes. had her on and we talked about her new hairstyle? Because <laughs> that's what yes. the show was one time. I, I just, I just want her to have one match. Mm-hmm. She, if anyone currently in NXT is more responsible for this evolution happening, mm-hmm. it is her. That's right, Sarah Del Rey just, versus Norma Smiley. Just give her a match. Have her win a women's title shot. Have her go up against either Becky, Charlotte, Ronda, Nikki. I don't care. She can lose. It doesn't matter. Drop I just her, want it to happen her, once. Drop her in a May Young Classic. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's an easy one, right? And I don't know. Maybe she's got some kind of injury or something that, that's keeping her from being more active. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I don't know. So... That's uh, that sounds like uh, uh well I don't know we just filled um and, and we also have the finals of the May Young Classic and the finals which, of, don't spoil we, we will not spoil who are, who is in the finals of the do May we, Young do Classic. We, uh, did they get to the last episode that will show who's going to be in it yet? That is tomorrow. That, that is, is tomorrow. tomorrow. So okay, again, just through like the in third episode. So yes, that is on tomorrow. So, I'm not going to spoil. We don't know. Gonna... All I can say is what I've been watching is amazing. Um, I, I and I know who who that final match is. Yeah. He's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to be real good. He's going to be real good, you guys. Like... <laughs> yeah. And there you go. And that might he's be the show be... stealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very well could be. So I, I, I would not be surprised if, uh, you know, an NXT UK um, pops up in there or something like that. You know, I, it, uh, I think it all depends on what they show tomorrow on NXT. Okay. Because technically, as of right now, they have not aired who the NXT UK Women's Champion is. Okay. To so. be totally fair, I feel like if Tegan Knox would have gone... Spoiler, sorry, how far are you? I have not started only... NXT UK. Uh, no, yeah. I mean for the yeah. Mayon Classic. Oh, May Young Classic? Like, I'm like um, halfway through the third episode. I, I, I just there, watched, I just who, watched Tony Storm and somebody. Did I watch that Sorg. match? Sorry, there's someone who got injured during their match. During yeah. Their match. And I feel like if she would have gotten injured, she would have easily taken the May Young Classic this year. And now Rhea Ripley can kind of, as that heel persona of her kind of reinvention going into this year's May Young Classic, she can say... I'm the one that injured the favorite and mm-hmm. get more heat building off of it. Uh, okay. Uh, this is something that's been bugging me at work. Um, is Rhea Ripley cosplaying as Pete Dunne? <laughs> no. She, I will kind of, um, she 
on commentary, they said her inspiration is guy um, Ronnie Radke from Falling in Reverse, that kind of punk emo style, the reinvent okay. of her being a badass. Okay, because because on, on WWE.com, there are pictures of the NXT UK brand, and it's the two of them side by side, and I swear to God, it looks like siblings. Is it? Are they both doing the belt thing or something? Like is, is no, it... it's it's the hair to the side. Okay, it's the hair to the side thing that's really messing with me. Because Pete Dunne has his hair to this side. She has her hair to this side. Like, it just... Is she the one? Because I remember there was a picture of some women's wrestler that I wasn't familiar with. It could have been her. That, um, uh, like, she was doing the belt thing and the and the, and the, the fist thing, like, like Dunne. And Dunne's just, like, looking like, you know, what the fuck to her. Oh, I don't know. It, it might have been her. Was that on posted on WWE? Because I think I know who might be talking could about. Have been an Insta- on- could have been an Instagram. I, I saw it somewhere along the way. I think you're thinking of Millie McKenzie. Okay, that could be. Could okay. Be. Okay. Had no but yeah, idea. I, I, it's just every time I see Rhea Ripley, I'm like, are are you cosplaying as Pete Dunne? Because, I mean, that's a good way to get yourself noticed because Pete Dunne's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just she just looks like him every time, and she's starting to wrestle like him, too, a little bit. Rhea could come like, me, and I would thank her. She's yeah. that good. Yeah. Al- Alex is saying that uh, Knox is actually banned from the USA for five years. What? I, she had a knee injury. Oh. oh. That she had surgery on. Okay. Yeah, I'd imagine if she's doing anything with uh, WWE over there that they would have whatever cleared up. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, one of the benefits from working with a company like this, they're going to make sure you're, you're shit is straight at the border, you know. Um, but, I mean, but then again, we hear about a lot of people getting tied up with uh, Canada uh, and not making it through, or we don't see them much anymore, which has affected people us here in Pittsburgh. Shirts What's that? Getting tied up. <laughs> what, what? I just said about people getting tied up in Canada. I said, yeah, if you wear Jackson Argos t-shirts. Yes. Yeah, sure. what's up, customs? Ah, actually, when I go, because there's a potential I might go to Canada next year, I'm going to wear. All, I'm going to get more Team Storm stuff. I want to bring my signed Team Storm uh, picture with me, so they'll just think I belong there. A huge goal of mine, like no kidding, is to interview Team Storm. I would love to do that oh. so much. Oh, good luck. No, I, I'm not saying good luck getting them. I'm just good luck when you get them. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're a bit of a handful. Yeah, they are. Uh, anyways, so on that note, you know what else is a, a handful? A handful of great pizza from our friends at Slice on Broadway. That's right. Even the caveman and the beast man loves it. Uh, just d- just don't try to handle my salad. Our good friend Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time, supporting uh, our in-studio guests uh, when they come in here. We are actually supposed to have two of our wrestling friends in here and they both canceled unfortunately but i think both of them were coming from west virginia so that's okay that's if something comes up that's cool um but anyways uh, go check them out four locations here in the greater pittsburgh area i know a lot of you guys come through pittsburgh every once in a while please go check it out if you're downtown it's right over at pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates and of course right here up the street the original the og on broadway avenue in the beachview neighborhood right on the train line get off that train go check it out we love our transit here um putting my uh local community hat on but anyways what's that each name will be your uber driver <laughs> <laughs> oh if you see my twitter you've seen my lift plans for this weekend uh but anyways go check it out no one of them was not ty cross <laughs> who the it. fuck is ty cross i don't know i did <laughs> I don't know. Somebody looked like him on the show last week. Uh, let's see. <laughs> and Dave points out that Beastman had no issue with their door. That's wild. because he kicked it in, he, not it, it down. It was open. It was open. We heard him coming down the street. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> go check him out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you. Let them know, Mayhemers, that we sent you. And we'll be right back after this message with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Molly was at King of Trios this year, and she was fantastic. I was there the year where it was um, they did a they had a Divas team, and it was Victoria. Um, oh damn it! It's Ivory and Jazz. Jazz? Yeah. yeah, that was the year that like it, it ended with the two Japanese girl teams, uh, the crown the first queen of trios. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. I think Kyrie and Io were on were on that team. No, pretty sure I saw Kyrie Sane and don't know it. 
Sorg, you already saw her. She was in Lucha Underground. This was <laughs> this was before Lucha. Kyrie and Io were both on Lucha Underground. They were part oh. of the Black Lois tribe. Ia? Oh dang. Oh Ia. yeah, that 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 one episode of, of Lucha Underground where Pentagon just fought three crazy Japanese yeah. women. I knew that was Kyrie. Like we, we yeah. I, I remember one of them that was down. Kyrie. One of them was Io. Io is the one in the Mayon Classic. See, yeah. I think she's the one next on my episode. Okay. I think she's like in episode in, three. Probably. Enjoy. She's fun. Mm. And, and 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 she looked familiar because I was. Although I feel like I, every time I see a Japanese wrestler, I'm like, I wonder if she was in that King of Trios. Um, <laughs> she probably was. Yes. And this is how we start the second half with my positing of who, who is that? Yeah. Um, it is a big question. It's a very it's a very evolution centric <laughs> one. Um, by the way, we do have. I, I wanted to try to get some people. We were, we were doing some weird things with scheduling, and uh, tentatively scheduled right now for next week's episode post evolution is London Ali. Uh, he's been doing some great things in uh, women's wrestling and uh, intergender women's wrestling. Yep. No, that's wait, wait, that doesn't work. Intergender wrestling. <laughs> um. You know, with a you know, with a slant towards women in the inner gender, I guess. Um, but uh, no, uh, no, she's going to be joining us, and I'm hoping to get some other uh, panelists as well to talk about that, about whatever does happen on Sunday, and uh, wherever we are at with other issues going on with the WWE lately. Mm. So, and uh, so the big question, uh, Mike actually had this uh, in line for last week. We kind of switched it up a little bit, so let's bring it back around to you, boy. All right, so uh, we've we've been talking a lot about evolution and how you know maybe it's not necessarily the card we would have put together if we had three months to do it, like a certain company with two W's and an E in it. So the big question for this week is: if you had a blank slate, blank slate, we're going to treat this like Mayhem Mania, using only the tools available. So I'm counting everyone from May Young, everyone from NXT UK, everyone from NXT, Raw, SmackDown, and past WWE legends. If you want to bring them in, as long as they're alive and kicking and able to kick and be alive, um, <laughs> what dream match would you have booked for Evolution? Can I go? Yeah. Um... And why do I feel like I'm saying her name wrong? Uh, Mercedes Martinez. Did I say that right? Okay, yes. Uh, against Ember Moon. <laughs> I think I'm on the right Ooh. track. Ooh, I like that. I like See, that. Mine was going to be Miko versus Ember Moon. Mm. Okay, okay. Can we just say anybody from the May Young Classic versus Emperor Moon? <laughs> just as a just a little asterisk by it, you know, just about. Oh, I, oh man. See, I, I, oh, man, this is tough because I have a bunch of things in my brain. And I don't know which one I want to say. Just put one out. Oh. Put one out in the world. Uh, Iconics versus Lay Cool. Well, hey, well, you've already kind of said I that. I know, but... I know that. That, that's the first. That's, All right, the, first that's the obvious one. That's a, okay. Give me another yeah. one because we, we've already discussed this one. This has already been out in the world. I, I, I want something new. I want something fresh and juicy. Probably not the word I should use. <laughs> All right. Use oh, here. I got it. I got it. Nikki Cross versus Victoria. Bam. Oh. Bam. Man. That, that, damn, it wouldn't everybody. happen. It wouldn't happen because I think there's some issues between Victoria and the company. Really? But. Nikki, yeah, I think so. I think I read that somewhere. It's <laughs> somewhere on a page on the thing. The internet no. told me. No, like on Twitter, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, Nikki Cross versus uh, Victoria. Are you ready for the chat room? And, barrage? and give it a street, give it a street fight. Mm -hmm. Make it, make it a street fight. Are you ready for the chat room barrage going on here? Absolutely. Alex, yes. Alex Miller out west um, is saying NXT title match. Kyrie Sane versus Mia Yim versus Tony oh. Storm, Storm versus Shayna. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'm with it. Dave Podner. Bianca Belair versus Alicia Fox. The promos would be amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Entirely true, especially because 
Bianca Belair, I'm not sure if you know this, or she's undefeated. She's undefeated. I'm just, you know, just the, you know, Alicia saying, no, you didn't just hit me with your hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ashanti. Ashanti. <laughs> I love that she keeps saying Ashanti. That is one of my favorite things from Mixed Match Challenge. Yes. She's always on time. She's always <laughs> there. We, we, we oh. got to roll back. We got to roll back for me because there's so much wrestling. We have to remember that not everybody can watch everything, much like some of us are being challenged. Um, she's teaming with Jinder Mahal uh, in Mixed Match Challenge. And he says, jeez, uh, uh, now I can't. Shanti. Shanti. He says Shanti. Shanti, which is, you know, it's a very yogi It's thing a meditation term. Yes. Also, a uh, C-level character on the show Heroes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> C-level. <laughs> it's true. Heroes. It's true. Oh. Wow, invoking heroes. You know, it's been like 10 Shanti years since Rush heroes. was yeah. responsible for the Shanti virus. I'm sorry. I'm getting us off track. Yes. Evolution. Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love heroes. And as soon as Jinder started saying Shanti, I'm like, is Mohinder showing up? What the fuck's going on, Jinder? So, anyways, Alicia Fox has a problem, and she he, she thinks he's saying uh, Ashanti, 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 and she's just, it's just a thing. It's amazing. Um, I know Alex Carr is Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox. I've been loving. By the way, um, um. Oh, what's his name? Nova. No, 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 I'm Dar. Yeah. Scottish new super Nova. Yeah. Um, I've been loving him uh, since he came back. And I think he was feuding mm-hmm. with Leo Rush for a bit. Um, again, not caught up, but what I've been seeing, I've been loving. I, I'm loving just him returning to like uh, Cruiserweight Classic, um, No, I'm Dar. Um, Jesse Bell um, and Britt Baker versus Charlotte and Becky from Wheels. Oh, Jesus. And also, uh, Alex said Mako versus Asuka, which, uh, yes, please. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. please. I would like that very much. Alex, Alex, Alex Mara wants to make that four-way NXT title match we mentioned earlier at a, a ladder match. You know, just, of for, just hey, for giggles. Alex, you gotta save that for Patreon in the background. All right. <laughs> yes. Come on. Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Come what are we? On. What are we? Animals? <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I think my chat room's not uh, giving me everything, Mike. Is there anything else I missed in there? Oh Sorry. no, no. I, I just saw the Miyoko versus Asuka. So. Yes, I, I got it. Uh, so did did you uh see my tweet that I already have my match booked for Mayhem Mania? <laughs> no. I I was I was just thinking aloud and I'm like, oh, this would be really great. I want to put this out in the world somewhere. And I'm like, I know. Twitter. Mayhem Mania. No, I, I oh L- Lola, have you have you experienced Mayhem Mania? I have not. Oh, oh. we're gonna have to bring you in for it. Wait um, until the yeah. spring or, or late winter. Yeah, I guess. you're gonna love it. Yeah, you're gonna um, love it. It's it's great. It's, it's, it's a fun just, little just game. Just go to back, play. go back on the site. Look up Mayhem Mania. Look out, look up the uh, the the Mayhem Mania post shows that we do, and just like especially those late ones, like especially <laughs> the, the ones with like the Chris, hottest damn show on the internet. Yeah, it is the hottest damn show on the internet. At least the most confusing. Um, but uh, it's there, and uh, and it's it's something else. So. Yeah, because yep. May- Mayhem Mania is where we basically make up our own WrestleMania. Yep. That's why, you know, it's Mayhem Mania rules for this evolution. Now. And then we get special guests like Krista Joseph booking booking WWE like the good old days. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, um, and then we make it <laughs> sponsored by Lucha Underground. Yep. Uh, all right. Do, do, do any of us have any more dream matches? I, I, like I think we're we're time. tapped on that. I didn't see if anything popped up in the chat room here again. Uh, but uh, anyways, so it, it's coming up. It's happening. Uh, looking forward to seeing what happens with this again. We are having a watch party here. If you are in the area, all are welcome to come hang out with us. Um, and, and if you and if you are going to Evolution and you see me, address me as Matt Mike. You get to chop me. Mm-hmm. Standard rules. Mm-hmm. What? Exactly. Is there? <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to this, and I'm just gonna posit this question afterwards. Okay. Um, it's not where I wanted to go with the next segment, but I just wanted to put the question out there. But first, I want to tell you about, which is appropriate in a way. Our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling they want to show their support to a good cause this month for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, they'd love to have you be a part of it when you buy their merch at What a Maneuver. For fifty percent of all uh, normal merch proceeds, will go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. But wait, there is more. They finally, finally released merch with their logo, and they even have it in pink. 
and 100% of the proceeds from those items will go to the foundation. Please check out all of the stuff at OccupyProWrestling.com uh, and get that link over there to WhatAManeuver.net and get more info on the Breast Cancer Research Foundation at BCRF.org. Go check it out. Um, I think I just excellent. I think the Latin assassin just waved at me. I missed <laughs> I'm gonna go check the tape. Uh, anyway, so no, here, here's my question. I was thinking about because you're gonna be there, Mike, and I'd be interested to see your take on it. And I, I don't know, geez, how many, how many women's shows have I been to? Like. A couple, I guess, at this point, right? Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that makeup of that crowd is going to be any different? Um, no, I don't think so. It, it's still I, WWE fans, regardless, right? Yeah, and it's in it's in Long Island. It's, I mean, there might be a few more women per capita. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be about the same kind of crowd that I saw at Takeover. To be honest. Like, I don't think it'd be the same crowd you would see at SummerSlam, but I think it'd be around the same kind of crowd you'd see at a TakeOver. It is a little bit of, like, it feels like some of it feels TakeOver-y, the way they're doing this, but as promoted on main television, right? So, mm-hmm. oh, that was thought. Um, I wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's the big topic for the week, and of course we did broach this pro- subject as part of the Raw wrap-up last night. Um, and the more I'm saying that and talking about Lola's spot on it, the more I'm realizing how I screwed up by saying the RWA wrap-up and the Raw wrap-up as two different shows that exist in the world, and I don't know how we got there. Uh, so, anyway, sorry. Um, but um, Roman Reigns came out with an announcement, kind of a surprise last night. Um, announced that he is uh, leukemia that he battled in his early 20s has relapsed. Uh, hence, he is leaving to deal with that. Uh, there was a press release um, afterwards that I know Justin LaVar had had shared um, stating that uh, he basically did it in this way. Uh, and plus, I mean, he's pretty much a very, very public feature and a very, very public spot as the champion um, uh, to uh, help uh, raise awareness for uh, leukemia and, and everything like that. So, um it was, let's say unsettling, but it was, again, it was surprising. It came out of left field. All we know is that he was missing some, some house shows over the weekend, uh, maybe in the last couple of weeks, as he was um, probably learning of what's going on uh, and, and dealing with that and deciding what to do about it. So um, I, you know, with everything going on with a, a company like WWE, this is maybe one of the best handled things lately um and you know i saw new japan tweet about roman reigns today Mm -hmm. like this is how big this is well roman was on good morning america the next day yeah he he was on it today yeah so i mean just just talking about it you know and and uh, you know really hoping for you know the best for him i mean you know it's uh for whatever you thought going on uh, I, I, you know, you know, you never saw anything that, that saw him as anything but genuine, genuinely, genuinely nice guy for the most part, uh, and stories from the back and everything on that. Um, I know there was a video that I shared. I shared it to my personal, um, and there's a, there was people. I think John McChesney, I, I first saw it, shared it, and and said this is why, this is why wrestling is amazing. I think was his quote there, uh, where he came through the curtain and just hugging oh, everybody, including Braun that, Strowman. That video made me cry. I know. That- that video made me cry. So and I think what's really important, love or hate Roman Reigns, whenever he, the moment he came out and addressed himself as Joe, things just changed. The, the mood in the room just completely changed. And you have to realize that at the end of the day, whether you're a normal human being, whether you're a performer, whether you're you know a part of the crowd or a wrestler, at the end of the day, we are all human dealing with struggles mentally, physically, and a lot of people don't realize that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, like I, I knew I knew something was amiss when he came out and he was wearing street clothes. Mm-hmm. You've never not, seen it. We've but, never but seen, but it. not not like Roman Reigns themed street clothes. Yeah. No, and and one of my friends even know like. Oh, like, because we didn't tell her what was happening because she watches Raw late. Um, and she's like, we were like, dude, just watch the first five minutes. You have to see what happened because we need to talk about it. And as soon as Roman walked out, she's like, oh, he's wearing his wedding band. And that's something that I would never have picked up on. But yeah, 
it definitely like it tells you like this this is not a story this is not a story this is something real and it's just very sad mm-hmm. and yeah. if you're one of those people wishing this upon him saying good that he's gone you are a horrible human being and i hope you shit your pants in public it's that oh, shit yeah. i mean is that i haven't seen any of that um I, i'm sure there's some trolls out there oh there are i'm sure but bad. dark corners of the internet so oh okay. yes uh so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. You know, wish him his, uh, the best, and and uh, you know, hope when he comes back around and we do see him and to to boo him or cheer him or whatever the case may be, uh, hell, that may change because I don't know how you can boo a guy that comes back from something like that uh, after I, after that. Well, I mean, I I know it's not really like too public, but I think Zack Ryder also went through something like this when he was younger. I think, like, yeah. Um, so I mean, don't worry. It's possible to boo him again. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Chachi how much he hates uh, Zack Ryder. Exactly that. Uh, with the right storyline, you'll boo anybody. And Absolutely. plus, at this point, even if he gets booed, Roman will laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, geez, anything else happening from the week in wrestling? I know it's been a pretty crazy. I, I, I okay. I got to talk about this one thing. Um, I, I got the chat with uh, DJ Z a few weeks ago. Bah, 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 bah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and see, we're getting good at this the sinking um, um, mm-hmm. thing. And I love this is more of an indie wrestling discussion. But I, I, you know, I, I've been seeing more. It, 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 if you listen to um, um, our, our recent talk on Indie Mayhem Show with Facade, he toured some stuff in Japan, and I guess there's these promotions where. Um, they only have like only a few wi- rings, but they do more shows than that. And they're mat shows, no ring, like wrestling amateur mat shows. And they mostly do chain wrestling, but still pro wrestling. Right. Um, so he, he was telling me about this promotion that basically happens in bars. It's basically kind of a death match promotion. Um, and definitely DJ Z is not <laughs> a death match wrestler. Um, by, you know, he'll admit it, look at his, his body of work. It, it, it's not a thing but the picture is one thing the pictures are amazing uh that come out of this they're on his page um and uh shared in the wrestling Mayhem show facebook group uh have you guys in a great discussion happening along with this as well um but have you guys kind of seen much of you know i've seen like these these bar wrestling shows like we mentioned off air about joey ryan doing that out in la um you know it's it it feels like we're taking pro wrestling and bringing it back to backyard wrestling in a way. If you know, if you do, you see where I'm coming from. I I think it just might be something like to differentiate yourself from every other indie fed that's running because that there's true. so much because there's so much independent wrestling going on right now that any <laughs> anything to stand out. Yeah, and. In 2018, professional wrestling has grown and independent wrestling has grown so much and has been thriving outside of, you know, the WWE bubble, sports entertainment bubble. And there's so much independent wrestling that if you strip it down to differentiate yourself and you're doing it well, then that's your thing. You can say, hey, my company does this, but we're still at the heart of it, independent wrestling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it, you know, and that got me to thinking because, you know, we've been talking a lot. We had a, a editors on Awesome Cast. We were talking about, you know, Rise this weekend with a Y is uh, doing kind of a zombie wrestling show of sorts for Halloween, uh, teaming up with Scarehouse. Uh, there's a lot of pictures going around of, uh, of, of guys like Duke Davis and Honey Badger and Jinx and, and David Lawless, like in the makeup, the Rev Ron Hunt uh, in the makeup, kind of doing some preliminary kind of kind of things on it. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, and I was thinking about that as I'm sitting there and editing RWA, which, you know, is great and getting better in recent months, by the way. Um, but then I'm just like, man, this is just a wrestling show. <laughs> as I'm looking at those and this 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 fight club wrestling and and these no match shows. And I'm just like, you know, what does stick out? I've heard multiple people say, yeah, we want to do some stuff from like Lucha Underground. But it's like, yeah, but only Lucha Underground can do Lucha Underground. What's your thing? Black Black uh, Craft is doing their thing and their vibe, right? That that hopefully sets them apart um, around the wrestling. So, and again, 
this is kind of the cool thing about indie wrestling is people can go out there and experiment like this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Lucha has kind of shown people that you can do completely different fucked up styles of wrestling. Yeah. And you can have weird ass storylines. And you know what? You're still going to get an audience because at the end of the day, you're still having someone pin someone else's shoulders to the mat. Whether that be a skeleton ninja and (laughs) an undead warrior with a thousand lives or a creepy guy who has a screwdriver in his lunchbox. Like, all those people can still have their shoulders pinned to the mat, and that's really at the heart of what professional wrestling is, regardless of what you have around it. It typically ends in that, doesn't it? Uh, the company is uh, Jesse Long in the in the group is saying that it's, it's actually local for them. Um, it's called No Peace Underground. So it's it's interesting. Um, honestly, it's something that I'd want to go see for the experience, right? Uh, <laughs> for something like this. You know, not a huge, huge, huge fan of deathmatch wrestling, shake my head at, at, at a bit of the things I see out there. Uh, but this, this sounds like it's something different, uh, at least a little bit. So go check that out. That's in the Facebook group. Join the conversation. And let us know what, what other kind of weird wrestling do you see? I mean, you know, the kaiju big battles and things like that that we see out and about or, or things involving ants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, Frantic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't invoke his name on the show. I uh, call upon a swarm of fire ants. Oh, jeez. And soldier ants. I don't and understand. I still don't understand what you guys are doing, inciting this, whatever he is on the Twitter. Sorry, but he doesn't know I'm not in Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, he knows I'm in Pennsylvania. So by association, you're. Yeah, that's dead. the problem. The rest of us are in Pennsylvania. I think he's on the <laughs> other end, but still. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I'm 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 fine with, with, with inciting a riot. I've attended a show he was at on this end of Pennsylvania. Sorry, you should wear an Ant Man shirt. An Ant Man shirt. Who has an Ant Man shirt? I, mean, I love the. I movies, got one in my loot crate. I don't do. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez. Uh what are we doing? Uh hey guys. Uh go support. Uh geez, damn it. <laughs> uh well we don't have a producer, so I feel like we should have changed up this ad by now. Uh but Lucha Fiesta is a thing that happened right here across the street. There's more wrestling happening in town. It was the first of the wave, man. It's just wrestling happening half a block up from it. And Lucia Fiesta is what started it with Sam Adonis, Bull James, Caristico, the original Mystico, or, and Sin Cara, the original of both. There are I didn't know there's another Mystico that took over after he left to be Sin Cara. And then there's another Sin Cara. Uh, and now he's Caristico, and he's still awesome. Uh, but him, Shocker, and so many more. It, it was a great Mexican-style Lucha Fiesta, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. Go check it out on iPay-Per-View on Fight.com. TV, the same place where you get your Ring of Honor and your Impact Wrestling pay-per-views that Mike definitely doesn't buy. But I mean, pick up Lucha Underground. Or, I'm sorry, Lucha still, Fiesta they Pittsburgh. Still, they still block me on Twitter. They still do. They still do. Um, I forgot I needed to talk to somebody about that. But anyways, go check it out. Fight.tv, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. A lot of friends of the show are part of that as well. I still don't know whose Malibu Al's hat was left here. I, I feel like it was Bold James, but it's now on Shawn Michaels' head. So, anyways. He's just a sexy boy. <laughs> Al's just a sexy boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, jeez. On that note, I want to know, to end the show, who is Ty Cross? <laughs> <laughs> no? Wait, really? No, no. No? No, sorry. sorry. We, we have to. I, I don't know who that is. If you would guess, who is Ty Cross? Um, Nikki's uncle? I think it's a barista in Portland. <laughs> uh, well, well, who do you think Ty Cross is? <laughs> you took my good answer. Um, <laughs> Wait, I took your answer? A barista <laughs> in Portland was your answer? That's oddly specific. He does wear a lot of flannel. <laughs> He's not into 
I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say. ASMR? He, he, I was going to say, he, he's a local Topeka ASMR veteran. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good answers. Thank you. So, uh, secondary question. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I I learned that if Baron Corbin doesn't send Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins to therapy next week on Raw, mm-hmm. what the hell are we even doing? What are we even doing here? Give them the work. Well, how about you? Learn to. I oh, I had the name in my head. Oh, she's breaking up. She's breaking Uh-oh. up, Captain. Just... She's breaking Come up, on. Captain. The internet can't stand it. It's because I asked one question too many, probably. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll we'll give her a minute, and I'm going to go see if there's anything in the chat room while we're uh, sorting things out here uh oh, oh <laughs> tie cross is my safe word tie cross attacked alistair black and also wheels learned that lola wants the cream i didn't want to say it now she can't even defend herself <laughs> um oh no oh no oh no robots robots all right internet is, is- Come back around. The robots, the robots are the saying, are you Ty Cross? Are you Ty Cross? Are you Ty Cross? Is she back with us? Is she moving? Is it still internet Something is Uh-oh. going. We're downloading an update or something. I don't the know. <laughs> Lola, please text in the chat room what you've learned. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, oh, you're back. Okay, say it real quick. Okay. Uh, Elias's gimmick is really similar to El Cabong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Yes. That was worth it. Yes. That was worth it. Yes. <laughs> Cabong! <laughs> so great. I hope, Perfect. I hope that's just what he is from now on. Uh, oh, well, what did I learn? Um, I learned, I learned, um, geez, there's so much that happened, like, to me. Um, <laughs> I learned how pissed I get. If but you enough about me. your ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I learned that I really hate when wrestlers touch my camera. Take note. Um, and I also learned it was not a Bobby Fish situation, Mike, by the way. Um, yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but it was almost a, yeah, it was almost bad. Um, I, I also learned, um, I also learned, um, no, I can't think of a good one. I'm just going to go with that one for now because I can't, I, I learned a lot. But I can't tell you most of it. Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'll tell you one thing I didn't learn from wrestling this What's week. What's that? I didn't learn who Ty Cross was. That's exactly <laughs> right. Lola Bradbury, you you are on the podcasting world. You're on the internet. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lola underscore Bradbury. I post a lot of awesome things on Twitter. I live tweet all that fun stuff. Um, you can also catch me doing cool things and i'm really really grateful to rwa renegade wrestling alliance my home promotion um kind of got my start and fell in love with independent wrestling there and i finally get to do stuff with them which is the best thing in the world so you can also see me there and my facebook obviously if you're watching this you know my facebook so there's that awesome mad mike 4883 on the twitter yes you can find me at um on the twitters tweeting about things also go to at mayhem show at some point on wednesday uh, DVR providing. I will be live tweeting Lucha Underground. Look for the hashtag MM. And if you're in Long Island for Evolution and you see me, say hi, Mad Mike, and you get to drop me. There you Woo! go. Make it happen. And and get that get that shit on the Instagram story or something. Get some video. Tag us. Well, it, it hasn't happened yet. So I want to remind you to continue to happens. to tweet as you hear this hashtag. Who is Ty Cross? Also, please uh, join us. Uh, we'll be there uh, representing Indy. Uh, wrestling.us uh, filming the uh, Fright Up Night in downtown Pittsburgh and Market Square. That is a free event, but if you want to get guaranteed seating under a tent, I don't think the weather is going to be bad, but if you want to just be sure, uh, that is going to be going on all night long as part of Fright Up Night here in Pittsburgh. The song? What's that? Mm-hmm. I, said, <laughs> I said all night long like the Lionel Richie song. Isn't that who oh, sings it? Not long. And, yes, and like the Magic Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but no, go check that out. A lot of friends of the show, including Scarehouse and Rise Wrestling, uh, involved with that. I think it's going to be a good, good time. And also, um, we, we are having that watch party on Sunday, but we are also going to have Sean Phoenix returning for Indie uh, Mayhem Show, his first interview uh, since his injury in IWC a couple of weeks ago. Uh, had a pr- pretty bad spill, um, you, you know, including you know, blown eardrum, uh, uh, cracked skull, other things going on uh, with him. I know he, he was in good spirits for a uh, Facebook Live, and I've been in touch with him uh, uh, since the incident. Uh, so we're going to uh, have, a, I think, a pretty interesting discussion about what happened, uh, how he's been coping, and just, just kind of where he's at with things uh, around that. That is going to be streaming uh, live on IndieWrestling.us Facebook at 5 p.m. on Sunday uh, here. And then, of course, um, if you want to come in early uh, for the paper, before the pay-per-view and attend that in person, you can do that as well or join us on the Facebook Live. And like I said, I believe London, um, London Ali is joining us next week. The exalted one, London Ali, uh, for the our kind of post-evolution wrestling mayhem show. That'll be 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday night. And programming note that Election Day, we will not be live, but we do intend to record something. And if I've done my technology right, you kind of won't notice we weren't there. It'll just be like another night where I ignore the chat room when we release that <laughs> on Tuesday nights. Uh, so you guys can all hang out here as if nothing has changed and pretend nothing has happened in the world except discussions about pro wrestling. Because this and is, who is safe- Ty Cross. And who is Ty Cross? And uh, in fact, ne- in fact, on election day, <laughs> I know. just fill the chat room with the political platform for Ty Cross. Tell us what Ty Cross is uh tell us what his views are mm-hmm. tell us what he's opposed to and we will all collect we will put this all together yes yeah, so and in the meantime if you in have anything in, if you have anything in the meantime please email who is my ty cross at wrestling mayhem show.com um thank you so much thank you Ty cross i know who he is you know, yeah uh, see you guys <laughs> see you guys next his time name is Havoc. mayhem out wait, just wait just wait just wait Wait for the perfect time in the This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media.